Hello, welcome to November 12th, 2022. My name is Kurt, and this is the Good Life Meditation, a video that I make each and every morning shortly after waking up. It's 4.30 a.m. right now um, to ready myself for the day to think about how I did yesterday with the challenges and opportunities that I encountered and to go over my life objectives and principles one by one. These are the life objectives and principles that I call the Good Life Creed. I've collected them over the course of my life and uh, added them to my book, Going Alone, which is the story of how I set out to, you know, face life <laughs> on my own. Um, basically, it's, it's the going alone part is the, is the recognition that, that there is no supernatural agency looking after us. Apparently, that's the case. We're pretty much just on our own. We've got each other, but that's about it. We've, we've got our, our pets, too. Um, we've got this uh, biosphere of the Earth that kind of seemingly uh, does its role of supporting us in its uh, chemical reaction kind of a way uh, with the energy coming in from the sun. But um, other than that, there doesn't seem to be anyone or anything pulling the levers and operating the universe. It's this vast... Uh, expansive indifference. Um, instead of dropping into nihilism and saying, if there is no God, then why, why have any purpose for life? I chose instead to f create a foundation of objectives and per principles that I could use to live the best life that I can, in spite of the fact that it seems like there's no one to look after us and there's no forever. And that's the story of going alone. It's the journey and the resulting set of values that I use to live the best life that I can. All right, I haven't had a sip of my coffee yet. I need to get started on that. Um, first, last night and yesterday, but let me have that promised sip. Yesterday wasn't a good day. Sometimes we just have days that or at least I do, I can't speak for you. I have days that just aren't that very good. They just, I mean, just, yeah, no, 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 I don't know, they don't fulfill their seeming promise. It was a day off, um, Veterans Day, and uh, thank you to all your veterans. Um, anyway, it dawned with promise, as holidays do, days off do. This will be a bonus day when I will get bonus things done and have bonus fun. I didn't feel like I did any of that. Although I did do some productive things. It just wasn't that day, that promised that day. So was that a matter of me hmm, and looking back? Perhaps the, the problem was my unreasonable expectation. Why did I think it was going to be a day of promise? It wasn't like a holiday day where you'd had had a, a morning of parasailing planned and then an afternoon of skin diving. It was it, it, it dawned like any other day with responsibility and considerations and mail. By mail, I mean, you know, all that mail brings, right? The responsibilities and commitments and, and bills, etc. So I guess I, would, um, I guess my expectations were out of alignment with reality. So it was, it was unreasonable for me to be disappointed in a promise that the day never offered. <laughs> so I struggled with that. Um, I wanted more out of yesterday, which was unreasonable. It's unreasonable only to the extent that I didn't plan for it. I didn't do anything to make it a better day. I just expected it to be a better day. And it doesn't have to be a good day in terms of fun. It can be a good day in terms of productivity. Maybe that's why some people never retire. They just stick with work because work comes with a, uh, a built-in promise or obligation. And then the consequences are, are clear. If you are, are expecting to uh, to put in eight or nine hours of work and have uh, a, per, 
a productive day, then you, then you feel good about the fact that you did that, even if it was hard. I should consider vacations day or, you know, holiday days like that more often. Hmm. I'll get to today in just a minute, but let's do the good life. Oh, by the way, running into the ocean did help me. I've started this routine where at the end of the day, I, I go down to the beach and uh, I run into the sea. I don't stay in the sea very long. It's already very cold and the weather has taken a cold snap just since we arrived. So it's really hard to do. <laughs> you know, it's really difficult. Um, but I do it on the days that I can, the days that I... I am working from home, and I can actually go after work. And maybe this week I'll be able to try doing it during lunch, which would be really fun. Good, good breakup of the day. We'll see. But that does the job. That does the trick of snapping me. Snapping some, some happiness into me. It's not that I'm not a happy person. I'm just a sober person during the day. <laughs> sober and taking on challenges and consider and considering my responsibilities and endeavoring and, and over untangling knots and all of that it, it doesn't it doesn't it, there's there's happiness in the re end result in the completion of the day but while we're at it it's just hard work uh, and jumping into the sea whatever my mood um, is like a uh, having a, having a bucket of cold water dumped on your head if anything it it's, you're not going to come out the same on the other side of that. Things will be different. Your attitude and perspective, my attitude and perspective will be different. And it was. Okay. Let's do the good life. Seven objectives and 32 principles. But first I feel a sneeze coming on. Mm. Oh, wait, wait. I'm reading this book. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, Gates of Fire. Very interesting. Um, it's about, uh, it's by uh, Stephen Pressfield. He does, he has an interesting uh, series of books where he basically does fiction out of famous battles. Not something I would necessarily be interested in, but I had read a, uh, another book about um, uh, uh, war. It was, I read it because it was recommended, that book was recommended to me by a friend who is a warrior. Um, and uh, who, uh, I won't tell anything about him because he's actually, actually, um, I won't say anything more <laughs> for his safety. Anyway, that friend of mine has some, has some stories to tell and, uh, he tells me in confidence. Well, I'll just go, I'll just go ahead and say that, that, um, he has absolutely zero social media. There's no way that you can actually find him because, um, there are people who can, to this day, are looking for him. So anyway, he recommended, after his experience in telling me about some of his stories, he told me about this book, um, which I, I picked. It's one of those things that, well, you know, I was, he, we were talking, and I, and I, and I got the phone, and I said, wow, it's a fire. Okay, and I went to Amazon and purchased, bang, and it was there the next day. And it's been sitting in my reading shelf forever, and I finally got to it, um, and it's a page turner. And it's a, it takes it's the position of a of, of a Spartan slave warrior, um, in a, a helot, and who's who was the sole survivor of the uh, of the um, battle of uh, Thermopylae. I think hope I say it right. Which 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 was the you know the famous um, movie Three Hundred, the story of the Three Hundred, the Spartans that that uh, faced down the the armies of the of the Persian armies of Xerxes. Anyway, just imagine yourself going in as the so a soldier in the battle and this is he's captured he's the sole survivor trod under and left for dead but his surgeons bring him back xerxes the great persian king um, brings him back and then has him sit and tell him through an interpreter the story of his life and how he wound up at the at the hot gates page turner i'm telling you so i'm really enjoying really enjoying that Got some good mileage, and I read it at the beach, too. So I sat here in my reading chair yesterday and read it and after I walked the dogs. And then I, that's one thing nice about this little house is there's fewer chores to do. So I can be, have more free time. That's no small thing. And then I also read it, so I'm, I'm looking forward to finishing that. 
Anyway, the good life. My seven objectives are as follows. One, to be always ready to die. To, to have my life affairs, my relationships, and my life's work in order. And they all are. That's an easy one now at this point in my life. It's easy because of the good life creed. Because I, if I endeavor to live according to my principles, then the consequence is a settled life. Not a life without trouble, but a settled life. It's not a matter of having life, you know, like, like packed up and ready to get on a bus. It's a matter of having life uh, uh, always ready for a guest. That guest be death. So when the uh, knock or the ding dong comes at the door, ding dong, and I go to answer it, and there's the Grim Reaper come to take me away. Oh, my papers are in order. My wife and daughter, and my mom and my brother, and my niece and my nephew, and my in laws and my friends, they all know I love them. And did I forget my mother? She's the tricky one with my relationships, right? Um, it's simply because, despite my best efforts, she really doesn't want to have a relationship with me. So it's, I guess it's easier for, to forget her. And I don't want to forget her. That's why I make the endeavor uh, to always reach out to her, hoping. Hmm. It's been a hope that I've had all my life. But uh, sometimes you just have to recognize true limits and true opportunities and what really is. And, what is not within our scope, our, 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 our family sometimes is, is much more than just simply the people that we're born into. Although I can't forget them, I can never forget my mom. I will be there for her um, yeah, until, until the end. And I will always reach, I will always hold out my hand to her. Anyway, I got kind of off on a tangent there. When, when, doorbell, when the doorbell rings and death arrives, my life's in order, my relationships are in order, and whatever life's work I'd done, I had endeavored to achieve, is done. And so if that's the case, yeah, that's it's all settled. Not done, but settled. Number two is to uh, develop and maintain good and, no, that's number three, good and sound life principles. That's the seven and 32 that I'm re relating now. And I do that by through this daily exercise of remembering the good life creed, reciting it, and talking about it to greater or lesser degrees. Back to number two is to um, make good and effective use of my time. That's probably one of the things I was frustrated about yesterday was that I, I, I had some vague idea about how I was going to use the time. I should, I should have laid it out. You know what I'll do? Maybe I'll take this, my little board here, and I'll create a line here. And then when I'm done, over here, I'll lay out my expectations for the day. Day, day, day's plan, or the day plan. Then, I'll have some, something to measure against. What do you think about that? I like that idea. Maybe I'll even lay it out by hour by hour, or, or, um, you know, morning and a.m. and p.m. Mm. I really like that. I'm going to try that. can't wait to get there, which is going to be a short, short time. So I've done the first three. Number four, the fourth objective is to cultivate good emotional reactions, to become a person who doesn't fly off the handle. Boy, was I on top of that yesterday. Man, didn't have a chance. Like I said, I wasn't in it. I wasn't in a. It wasn't that I was in a foul mood yesterday. I just didn't feel. I felt out of sorts all day, pretty much, until I jumped in the ocean and that kind of sorted me out. But I don't think I don't. I was with Yumiko all day, and I don't think. Well, she can see everything. She she certainly knew I wasn't myself, or that is myself. But she certainly knew that I was out of sorts. But I did not make any 
I did I really didn't make much of an out, outward display of that fact. I was probably quieter than usual. That's because I was reserved, holding in my speech, speaking to, if I didn't have anything, it's not that I, it's that I didn't have anything bad to say. It's not that I was saying bad things. I just didn't want to soil anybody else's, anybody else's day with my own, my, my, my foulness. But I kept it, I, I kept it, um, just, just I was a, I was quite stoic yesterday, so in the more traditional stoic sense of just holding it in, bottling it in, and then I uh, I released it in the evening with a, with a jump in the ocean, and then I was myself again. And even without the ocean, it can be released in other ways. And sometimes it doesn't even need to really be released. It's like a it's like a like a, a rain shower passing. It just passes. It doesn't mean and the water just drifts away. My tummy's making noises. Okay, number uh, five is to um, perform good actions, just to do good things throughout the day. Um, like yesterday when I came out of the water, out of the ocean, I noticed a, 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 a couple of pieces of plastic on the beach. So I picked them up, got them into a, a small handful, and uh, walked them to the trash, shivering as I went. Because it was cold, out of the out of the water, the winds blowing, the sun's going down, and I had to walk all the way to the trash in my swimsuit and <laughs> lift the lid. <laughs> but I did a good thing. Look at that genuine smile, because the, the the results are immediate, right? I mean, living a, a life aimed at virtue, where virtue is defined as the working towards the improvement of the well-being of creatures, in particular thinking creatures, it does nothing but make us feel good. I mean, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good feeling to live a virtuous life. It is at the most refined level, the aim of going alone. Okay, number six is to um, recognize my true limits and my true opportunities, so then living within um, the scope of my possibilities, not expecting more than I can actually do. And then uh, number seven is to uh, do one thing at a time and do that thing slowly and deliberately and carefully, to try to avoid multitasking. The one thing that I do indulge in in terms of multitasking is that I do... I do read while I walk the dogs, and I do read while I walk. I've got, I'm very good at it, actually. I only run into light poles once in a while, um, but I can read and I can kind of, my peripheral vision can see everything. So I, I, I will never give that up. I, I treasure I treasure the time, the moments that I have to read so much, and it's so few. Okay, there I did my seven objectives. Let me take a moment to say hi to Parker. Hi, Parker. I hope you're having a good day, my nephew Parker. Looking forward to our uh, our hike together coming up. Glad you got a good hat. Okay, now my 32 principles. These are as follows. I'm going to give myself a lightning round again. Just kind of working way, my way back into the more dia, into deeper water. It's like drifting down the water, it's getting deeper. And then you just plunge in. I'm not quite ready to plunge in yet. Let's see if I can get all 32. Excuse me, Dolly. War, reason, homunculus, anchor hold, home of good and evil. Purpose, atomic principle, pirate ride, maturity, social principle, public speaking, distraction, agency and the great indifference, temperance, Life will not go well. The horror show. I'm going fast. I'm in danger of skipping something, huh? Um, that which must be born. Um, the feast of Wolfel. Best seat in the house. Yeah, I think so. Um, The 
the restless man, the path of wildness, the great life adventure. Why do I feel like I missed something? A great, a great life adventure. Um, that which must be, no. That's, is that the one I missed? Did I miss that which must be born? Maybe I did. I'll put that up here as impossible, maybe. Um, now I don't remember where I was. Great life adventure. Oh, I remember. The risk of avoiding risk. I already marked, so I won't mark again. The risk of avoiding risk. Sin and damnation, complete oblivion. The bullseye, the bullseye aim, uphill climb, arena and utility. Nothing is enough. The principle of fun. So that's 30 or 31, I definitely missed one or two. Well, that's what I get for going fast, right? That's why the objective of one thing at a time and slowly and deliberately is so important. So it's a cautionary tale. <laughs> it's a lesson in, in the misapplication of my own principles to show, to reveal the value. I guess that's a valuable thing. That's a good thing, right? I mean, it's, it's, um, it's I'm almost falsifying my proposition. No, I'm not falsifying it. I'm, I'm affirming it. Going fast can get you there quickly, but you'll you may lose something along the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's get. I was kind of racing because I wanted to, to get to the point of what I wanted to do, which is today's plan. So let's plan the day out. What's going to happen today? It's Saturday, the twelfth of November, and what am I going to do today? Well. After I finish this, I'll upload this video, then I'll read my Bible. So, the Bible, and then I'll feed the dogs, feed and walk the dogs. And while, while I'm walking the dogs, if the sun's out far enough, I'll read while I walk. Otherwise, I'll, I'll listen to a pod, I'll listen to the news. And then when I get home, I'll clean the house. That won't take long. Small place is easy to clean. This is where it kind of spins off, right? This is why this is such a useful thing. I think Yumiko said she's going to do some stuff. If that's the case, then maybe I'll go to the beach. Hmm. That'll take the whole morning. Oh, lunch. Yumiko and I will get lunch together. And after the lunch, that'll take me all through the a.m. So the AM is all mapped out. The PM is, I'm just going to call that open. Do whatever. Read. I'm working on, um, I'm working on a good life meditation live stream. I created some uh, PowerPoint slides that I might work on for that. Yeah. And then in the evening, I know what'll happen. Well, I'll go for my ocean swim. Or maybe I'll do it mid, mid afternoon. I'll go for my ocean swim and then I'll come home. Um, Yumiko will make dinner. We'll watch a, a show together on TV while we eat our dinner together, which is we've settled into this routine, which is so reminiscent of how we lived when we were a young couple before Emily. We would uh, sit uh, on the sofa. This was long before the streaming or the internet existed. And she and I would watch Cheers and Frasier and Seinfeld together and laugh and eat our dinner together. We've returned to that routine. We don't even have, really have a dining room table anymore. We just sit there together with our dogs, uh, eating our food and watching our shows. So that's what that's how we'll end the day. That'll be pleasant. Look, feel the smile coming. That'll be pleasant. Okay, I think I have to day plan what challenges could come today. Expectations not being realized. Hmm. Oh, my foot's doing better, so that, that, I think that's going to be okay. Yeah, I think that's it. I might 
anticipate that I'm going to have a fun afternoon, but if I don't plan it out, then that doesn't plan out. I could hop on my motorcycle, and I was thinking about riding to the port of Long Beach and just motoring around over there because it's close by. And uh, just I like ports. I like harbors. I like to explore, sit around the docks, read a book. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I wish you all the best. Be safe, but not too too safe. Have a good day, Parker. Bye-bye.